What is cropping up stockers? To Zai Zach, the stock cropper. Happy Father's Day to one and all. I've got my Gatorade, the thirst quencher hat on. Uh, this morning I'm out uh, happily walking on my lands that we were extremely fortunate enough last night to get about a half to three quarters of an inch of rain here in north central Iowa. And to those of you that have not been so fortunate uh, that are hurting, uh, my thoughts are with you and I hope that the pattern turns like a lot of the experts are hoping it will in the next week or two. Been uh, a busy stretch here over the last month since the last video. I'm gonna try to pack a lot of stuff in today to give you an update on where we're at with stuff. So I'm starting my crop tour out this morning at our field, uh, our 80 acre field of strip intercropping, uh, which I sprayed um, my herbicide pass on uh, about three or four days ago, sprayed Liberty and Roundup after putting Zidua and Verdict down. And uh, like I've said before in videos, this farm doesn't have a ton of weed pressure, so we can get away with it here, or I think we can anyway. It looks like we've got a semi-decent kill on stuff so far, so we'll see. But uh, this is really coming along. Um, you can see our outside row here where we've got about 46,000 pop uh, of Pioneer 0953. Uh, looking relatively good. You can see a little bit of nitrogen burn from our side dress application we made about 10 days ago. We came through with our eye dripper and laid the beads of nitrogen on both sides uh, to feed it. Um, we did have one interesting thing happen. We screwed up and we planted. And if anybody that's local that's driven by and seen this row of shame that we have in the middle here, it's really caught up quite a bit. But early on, this really looked like crap before we got additional nitrogen on. When we turned off the uh, outside rows of our nitrogen system on the planter, we didn't realize that we had one row of uh, nitrogen that instead of was going to corn, it was actually hooked up to a bean row. We thought everything looked like it was in order. But we planted literally uh, everything but like one or two strips before I figured out what was going on. So we had a crappy row of corn, and then we have this really boisterous row of soybeans that looks <laughs> greener. So this is what happens when you put 17 gallons of 32% uh, on beans. This is going to be fun to watch. I've never done that before, but it is visibly uh, bigger and better. I'm not sure that that's something I'm going to do in the future, but I'm going to watch this row throughout the rest of the year. But uh, the intercrop, um, otherwise, other than the row of shame here, is looking uh, looking good. And with this rain, one of the things we really struggled with last year was drought stress uh, on this outside row, especially on the west side of the strip that faced into the rains. The east side had bigger ears, but I'm hoping if we can get lucky and keep getting rains here, uh, we're going to be in good shape. And this... Uh, 953 is going to do big things. I'm really hoping this year that we can hit 300 bushel corn. I think we got the hybrid to do it. We got the stand out here. We've got a row of shame, but that'll keep us humble. And uh, and the beans are are looking good. Again, I planted uh, a, a 2.5 bean in the middle six rows, and then a 1.9 bean on the outside rows next to the strip, and that was because. I had wrapping problems with the combine last year with the beans that are in the shade not maturing as quickly. So we just changed that by putting a different bean on the outside edges next to the corn to hopefully solve that problem. But so far, so good on the intercrop 80. Okay, next up uh, on the Sunday morning tour here is our 60 inch hybrid plot that we have uh, here. This is actually located on the first uh, stock cropper site that we worked on in 2020. And I wanted to give you a tour of what we got here. So with all the work that I'm doing uh, with gap corn and the outside row effect uh, with that happens with strip intercropping or with the stock cropping system, uh, it's important to understand the difference in hybrids uh, and how they react to, um, uh, to this gap. And so what I did was, uh, since I'm a, uh, a Pioneer boy, I took all, I uh, talked to Pioneer and I had them give me uh, a bunch of different hybrids that are brand new to take a look to see how they react in this gap environment. So across this plot, every pair of rows is a different hybrid. And these are hybrids, in fact, not varieties. Uh, that's an inside joke. Uh, but anyway, so every set of rows is a different hybrid as we walk across the plot here. 
And so what we're going to see and measure, and we'll take this to yield and we'll make observations throughout the year, is to see how they all respond to having uh, this full sunlight and how they flex and how they react to this unique arrangement. And then what we will do is we'll use this information to determine if we're going to start to scale stuff out, uh, which products react the best to this gap. Because as uh, the work that my good friend Junior uh, Panstil out in Nebraska has done, hybrid selection makes a difference. And so I wanted to have a plot. I think we've got eight or nine products out here from like 94 all the way to 114 day um, that we put out here. And uh, we're gonna see how they do. So more to come with this throughout the rest of the summer. All right, so now we've moved over to our stock cropper site uh, here just east of Buffalo Center, Iowa, that a lot of you have seen in the past. So uh, we've got our corn uh, in our strips. You can see here our 20-foot lane of uh, corn and our 10-foot lane of corn next to it. Uh, these were planted, I think, about the middle of May, so they were a little bit later than everything else. Um, and I haven't been as timely on some of this stuff, so I can see I've got some weeds that I've got to get on top of this week to get this stuff cleaned up. But our pasture strips um, have taken off. I'll give you a, a picture of what those look like here. So this is the 10 foot lane of pasture strip that uh, we're gonna be putting the cluster cluck uh, nano in, the original nano that we built in 2021. You can see our pasture mix has really taken off. It's getting up to about knee high now, which is perfect height to get the barn started. One of the things I really like about this year uh, is the fact we have a lot less oats in our mix and has given a lot better expression to some of the other uh, species in the mix, including uh, the field peas that you can see here vining out, as well as the annual ryegrass. We've never had the annual ryegrass uh, be able to really get established with the really dry Junes that we've had, along with the competition of the oats, but we cut the oats back and we used oats this year in the mix that were a year old, and so uh, they did not germ as much, but there's still enough here that we've got a good uh, mix of forage and you can see the oats are starting to head out so we will be getting the barns out here to launch this week again we'll have the 10 foot lane of barn uh, for the 10 foot strips here with a nano so four rows of corn with four rows of pasture and then we'll also have our eight row strips so here is eight rows of corn on where the barns went last year looking fantastic this is where the summer lane will be. We're gonna drill this probably this week, come out here and get that pasture established. And then another eight rows of corn here with the 20 foot wide pasture mix, which really looks good. Man, this stuff looks good. This is the first time I've been in this in a week. Uh, so we will get our cluster cluck 5,000 out, out in this with uh, sheep and pigs in it. And uh, we will be off to the races. So I had something happen this spring uh, that I've never had happen before. Uh, we had our chicks from Hoover Hatchery, or Hoover's Hatchery here, and uh, up and growing, and they were doing great. Hadn't uh, hardly lost any. And over the course of three nights, I got completely cleaned out. Every one of them was killed, I think by a mink or a weasel. And uh, did everything I could to try to find out where they were getting in and could not stop it. And so we have no chicks <laughs> to uh, to go in the stock cropper this year. So I do have some laying hens that I may substitute into the nano, uh, or we may put some pigs uh, in the back of the nano. So we would have two barns with just sheep and um, sheep and hogs uh, this year. But uh, rather than start over timing wise, I think we're probably just going to run uh, the dual species. It also uh, makes the summer a little bit easier. Not that I wanna do that because that's really for this system to work, you need to have all three species. But uh, for demonstration purposes here, which is the purpose of this plot, um, it should be good enough for this year. So likely no chickens this year, unless I change my mind. So for those of you that have been to our field days before, you know that up here by the barn is where we usually gather and uh, look out to the south. And this is where, for those that remember the, uh, the gap planner work, uh, the John Deere planner that I bought, and got set up, we have a gap planter corn showcase out here in front for those who want to come to our field day 
We have a look at all these things that you're going to see in today's video, August 26th. Partner with Practical Farmers of Iowa. Saturday morning, 10 o'clock is the game plan to come take a look at this. But what you'll see out front here is all of the different corn gaps. And we're going to be seeding our cover crop mixes into it this week. Uh, especially now that we have some moisture, stuff will germinate and come. But uh, we've got 90 inch twin row corn, we've got 60 inch twin row corn, and we have 72 inch twin row corn here to take a look at. So this is a look across, so 72s, then to 60s with the twins, and then last but not least, out to 90s. The 90s, we had a problem with uh, the planter, I think, it must have shallowed up on one row because we have some corn plants now that are just coming up. But it'll still work for demonstration. We've got a couple rows here that look good. So the idea with this plot is to show, uh, to have something where you can walk between all these individual spacings to see how the plants react to the space and also how the covers react in between at all three of these spacings. It's going to be a really, really nice side-by-side -side demonstration of what this gap corn thing can look like. And last but not least, on this Father's Day, I wanted to give you all a look at our field scale 72 inch twins, uh, which are really starting to take off. Uh, these were planted later. We had uh, broadcast nitrogen on them, and then we came in with the eye drops, got nitrogen on them about, I think a week ago. And, uh, but it's, Laid here until last night to get rain to take it in, so this corn is a little bit yellower compared to the stuff that caught a rain right after we got the nitrogen on. Uh, but we had egg retain in the mix, so that stuff should still be there and uh, taken now in and get pumped into these things. But I really, really like uh, what I'm seeing already in the 72 inch gap compared to the 60s and the 90s that we did last year. The reason we picked 72 was we thought that this would be the gap where we could still get a meaningful amount of cover crop growth in the middle, say 30 inches of here, of, of this gap, where you have enough sunlight and you have these things still close together enough where you can maximize that edge effect across the entire field. So uh, if I had known that it was going to rain, I would have worked all day yesterday to come out here and get these gaps seeded. The little drill that I bought, uh, did not, was not quite wide enough to get down, or it was too wide actually to get down these strips. I was running corn over. So we're gonna have to come out here and actually broadcast uh, all of these strips um, and then run up and down with a four wheeler and a drag. Hopefully gonna do that later this week and uh, get this established. We got another chance of rain next week and weekend, I guess. And so I'm hoping we can time that out. So we'll have our covers established before the 4th of July. This is the 30 inch check of corn that we'll be comparing yield to. So you can kind of see down there, we've got uh, 72 inch corn on either side of this 30 inch check. And you can see the, the difference now. Now down in that bottom, I'll try to zoom in on that, my camera. Uh, that actually drowned out right after planting. And so we replanted that uh, across that entire bottom of peat. But that stuff is really caught up nice and uh, um, we're going to have a complete plot from from one end to the other but anyway that is uh, what the 72s look like so again i just walked over and i wanted to show this spot so you can look down here and 72 inch twins why we got 64 inches between plant to plant and you can see already by the 16th of June or whatever it is today that we have these big 1197 leaves reaching out grabbing sunlight working that phi curve and like we already have tips that are only 12 inches apart uh, stretching through this row so um, that's why we wanted to space it out wider than 60 so in order to be able to grow something in this path about 30 inches wide here in the middle, that's what we're gonna come in and seed or try to seed 30 inches wide, drag it in and hopefully get enough expression where we can grow something meaningful that's going to build soil, build uh, uh, nitrogen levels so that next year we can slide this over and put them right into 
that illustrious cover crop mix uh, that hopefully if it keeps raining we will have to show everybody on the 26th of August. So an update on the new barns that we're working on. We've got the Cluster Cluck Nano 2 that is uh, in the shop, or both of them are in the shop at Milwaukee, uh, which are getting work on the steering systems, the auto steers. We were hoping to have them done by now and have them out in the field, uh, but we've had some issues with software, had to switch out some encoders, troubleshooting some stuff. So they're uh, delayed slightly here, but we're hoping we're gonna make progress on that this next week and hopefully get them out as soon as possible. The other thing I've been working on um, and alluded to it when I did the Vance Crow podcast uh, is the Cluster Cluck Pico. Some of you may have seen tweets of that on Twitter. Uh, that is the backyard autonomous unit that uh, I've been developing over the last three months and hopefully going to have that thing in my possession uh, before the 4th of July. And all of these things hopefully will be here at our field day. I shouldn't say hopefully, they will be here at our field day on August 26th. So you can see we've got a lot of stuff to look at. We've got gap corn, we've got stock cropping, we've got 60 inch hybrid uh, trials, not variety trials, trials, hybrid trials. Uh, we've got a whole cornucopia of things to come see at uh, the stock cropper plot outside of beautiful Buffalo Center, Iowa. So uh, August 26th, our field day, get it on your calendars. Uh, it's a Saturday morning, no excuses. We've got a lot of really interesting things. We got rain. We're super lucky, again, to all those hoping for rain. Uh, I really hope the pattern changes. I uh, watch Eric Snodgrass every day, and he is saying that eventually this pattern is going to break. And I believe in that guy, so uh, here's to his forecasting coming true. Thanks for everybody for watching and the continued support. We'll see you on the next one.